Uh, I think that's right. Yes. And it, as you can see, it goes up above 80, which would be in the normal uh, range of conscious awareness. This type of finding was found in 10 out of 10 uh, study, uh, a patient study in these two studies. Chalo now says he's done it with hundreds more and he gets it about 90% of the time. Now his first explanation was it was some spasm of ions causing depolarization. But that doesn't really make sense because this is coherent. It's hard to imagine how such an event could be coherent across the brain. Uh, so we're going to be hearing more about this and what it means. Was it a near-death experience? Was it just an artifact? It could be consciousness because I think consciousness as a quantum process is very, very low energy. So we usually think it's the first to go when the, when the brain goes bad, when it's problems with the brain, but it could be the last to go. It could be sort of playing possum underneath all the other activity and, and finally, uh, because it's a low level quantum process, uh, even gets out, perhaps, who knows. So I was asked about this. Intimate explanation, not necessarily. This is about a reincarnation case. So can you tell us a little bit about how you think of consciousness? I think most people would see the brain as a computer of 100 billion simple switches, each neuron being a switch. You can fire or not fire. But neurons as a cell are incredibly complicated. And I think we have to go down a level below the level of neurons, inside the neurons, to the level of the microtubules. The blood stops flowing, and the oxygen is being delivered, and the brain starts to lose it die essentially, the quantum information that is consciousness, including memories, isn't necessarily lost, but can dissipate in large. So it's possible that consciousness, including memories, can exist outside the brain, outside the body. And in the case of near-death and out body experience, would go back inside. If the patient died, then perhaps could be drawn back into another organism, another set of microtubules in a zygote or an embryo. It's laid out a plausible theory about how consciousness could exist independent of the brain after life. So do you believe it's possible that you could be reincarnated? It's possible, I hope so. Uh, you know, we'll find out, maybe, I don't know. I do think people who say that it's impossible are just wrong because we don't understand what consciousness is. If we had a good explanation for consciousness based on the brain's computer, then I would say no. But I think it's possible. I learned a lot about how Dr. Hameroff thinks I think she kind of rags on me a little bit, so I'll move on. Um, <laughs> she's the hardcore skeptic, and the other guy was kind of a believer type. But I, he told me that she was, uh, you know, uh, less harsh on me than any, any other anybody else they'd come across. So let me just wrap up and say that, in a very general sense, uh, the world is divided into the quantum and the classical. And if Penrose is right, consciousness is happening literally on the edge. It's a self-organizing process on the edge between the quantum and classical worlds. So to conclude, I think that consciousness in the brain depends on quantum processes in, in microtubules inside neurons and, and glia. These quantum processes connect the brain to some non-local fundamental space-time geometry, perhaps described through strings, loop quantum gravity. We don't know something. I prefer loop quantum gravity, in which proto-conscious precursors are embedded as irreducible components of the universe. In other words, Consciousness isn't a higher order emergence from very, very complex things. It's something built in, or its precursors are built in to the universe, which get accessed or liberated. And this suggests a open, opening a potential Pandora's box for science of non-local effects, including ESP, spiritual connection, altered states, and even afterlife, which are sort of, which are discredited and not even discussed, taken seriously, because they can't be true. They seem impossible. Well, maybe they are possible, and now they'll have to be considered with more seriousness. So I thank you for your attention. You've been a great audience, and thanks a lot. OK, before we do a, a break of 10 minutes, uh, we have time for a few questions. So please. I can speak fairly loud. OK. Um, Okay, the, uh, the quantum thing has several aspects. Number, the, solving the hard problem suggests that consciousness is an irreducible fundamental 
built into the universe of the Planck scale, so you need to access it and select it, as opposed to it emerging from complexity at a higher order, which most people do believe. But if that's the case, you have uh, complex uh, nonlinear dynamics in, in uh, hurricanes and in, in uh, the great spot of Jupiter and complex weather patterns and computers. They're not conscious as far as we know. So complexity and emergence and, and uh, is not the answer. I think you have to have an irreducible component. You need some kind of quantum process to go down at that level. As far as non-locality per se, it would be useful if, if you know, things like telepathy and ESP and things like that are true. And I, I have to think they are, but even aside from that, um, in their thing, even gamma synchrony brain-wide, it's really difficult to explain how you can have uh, zero phase lag potential across the brain with this gamma synchrony. Now they say, well, we can do it phased loops, blah, 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 but I don't think so. Uh, and uh, I think you need the uh, non-locality uh, just for something like that, and also for quantum, for quantum computing. So the, the, the quantum thing is, th there's several angles. One is that after studying microtubules for 20 years, I didn't have a mechanism for consciousness. Penrose had a mechanism based on quantum physics. So it was the only mechanism I had ever uh, heard of, and it remains the only mechanism I've ever heard of. Nobody really, other than this, wave their hands and say emergence, blah, 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 and I've heard a lot of that. Uh, I, I haven't heard a mechanism for consciousness other than that. So, you know, maybe emergence is right, but there's no testable predictions, there's no equation yet that says if you get this, this certain thing happens, consciousness will happen. It's all just kind of, you know, supposition and hand-waving. So at least this is a mechanism. First, uh, congratulations for, it was so clear for a very complex subject, so. Thank you. Congratulations. And do you think after um, this, with this theory, we can probably explain the apparition of consciousness in a complex system like uh, internet or, <laughs> or economical trade, economical trade, for example. No. <laughs> uh, if you, if you say the internet is going to become conscious when you get a certain number of connections, or something like that. I mean, this is a deep question because it involves you know, the singularity and artificial intelligence. So artificial intelligence people, since before I got interested, I mean, since the 50s, have been trying to uh, build, or earlier, trying to build computers equivalent to the brain to take over things, you know, to run things and to help us you know, in a good way. Um, but one of the, you know, they, they claim or they, they are striving for brain equivalence and therefore consciousness without really knowing or caring what consciousness is. They say if you just comp get complex computation. So, for example, uh, they would say the brain has 100 billion neurons, uh, each with, say, 1,000 uh, synapses switching 1,000 times. That gives you I don't know, something like 10 to the 15th, 10 to the 14th operations per second. So when we have a computer that can match 10 to the 14th operations per second, it'll be conscious because that's all, that's all the brain is, is simple switches. In a, now, if you consider the microtubules, in, in each neuron is 10 to the 8th tubulin switching at, me, uh, say, 8 megahertz. So that's 10 to the 15th operations per second per neuron. So you have to multiply that times 10 to the 11th neurons at least. So uh, the singularity says that when they are able to do that, um, if they are able to do that, they, and they say it's inevitable because they're looking at the neuron as a simple switch, uh, then everything will change. Computers will take over, our lives will become easier, you know, depending on who you ask. Other people say, well, it's going to be Skynet from uh, the Terminator. But, you know, but in any case, I don't think that's going to happen because it, that's not consciousness. That's just brute computation. Think about the connection of billions of computers, and this is something I don't just I don't think yeah. about only one computer who are very huge and with lots of connections. Yeah. Just a, yeah. Well, it's just uh, it's, that's that's just more computation. You know, maybe you know orders exponentially more, but it's still classical computation. You know, my definition of consciousness is this objective reduction. When the superposition reaches threshold you have the self collapse. Uh, that could happen in a machine, and it could be a quantum singularity, but it would have to be specially designed. Just any old quantum computer wouldn't do it because uh, you need the, the E uh, to be, E sub G, the uh, 
gravitational self-energy be large enough to reach T in a short enough time to have a conscious moment. I mean, an electron would have a conscious moment after 10 million years if it wasn't, uh, didn't decohere. But to have, you know, 40 per second, we need a, a nanograms of superposition material. Now that's in principle possible in a quantum computer, maybe made of fuller rings or something, if not microtubules. And so I don't, you know, rule out the possibility of consciousness in a device at some point, but not, not just by classical computation, because I don't think that has anything to do with, con with consciousness. It's more like, you know, our unconscious processes, our autopilot. And they can be very, you know, come up with very useful machines, but it's, they're not going to be conscious. Yes, but one finished question. Uh, okay. If I understand what you say, you speak about some kind of singularity. Singularity. Yeah. You know, you, you, you made the singularity with the physical, the quantum physics. And in quantum physics, we speak about singularity. So, right. and, and, and there are a singularity, just one more. And in um, the computing system, in the internet system, first, there are some singularity. We call them bug. You know? And it's probably some kind of singularity, and we can use the same development for the computer connection because there are some singularities. Okay, well, you kind of lost me at the end, but, but let me just say that singularity is a term in physics for Einstein's equation like black holes, and, but, but then people use the term to mean something, something completely different, some event that's going to be a huge paradigm shift due to consciousness occurring in a classical computer. So they stole the term and called it a singularity. Um, so I'm not talking about a black hole or anything like that. I'm talking about the commercial singularity put, you know, promoted by Kurzweil AI and those guys, which I think is baloney. Yes, I'm with you. But okay, yeah, maybe you can take the next question later. Yeah. Okay. Just uh, one more question, and then we'll stop. Hello. Uh, consciousness. Okay. Can you? Uh, as the next, now you know there's consciousness. But what is the consciousness able to do? Hmm? What is research about the consciousness? Spiritual spirituality, for uh. example, um, mind breathing or stuff like that. You know, research about what you are able to do. With right, I understand. You understand. Yeah, I think you're referring to spiritual states and, and uh, enlightenment and enhanced states, and, and that's all very important. Uh, to get to, to try to understand that, you first have to understand normal consciousness, you know, awareness. Just if, if you hit your toe, that hurts. How does that pain? I mean, you start with. That's hard enough. That's very difficult to explain why we have conscious experience of any kind. Now, the kind of experience you're talking about, I think, is very uh, uh, consistent with the quantum consciousness view. In fact, I think even uh, we were talking at dinner about the different the fractal repeats of the inf information from the uh, uh, gravity wave detector and the, at, at the scale-free dynamics occurring from a very small to very large. So I think. You know, it's possible even that, that uh, altered states might include uh, even, uh, you know, things as strange as astral projection and, and spiritual states outside the body are possible um, if you go uh, smaller in scale, faster in frequency through meditation and so forth. Like the Beatles said, the deeper you go, the higher you fly, the higher you fly, the deeper you go. I think there may be a, a physical correlate of that in, uh, in going into space-time geometry, smaller and smaller, uh, but also vaster and vaster. 